Good afternoon people, I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm gonna check back in a second just to make sure if somebody can just post into the feed because I can't see the feed while I'm talking to you. Um, just whether or not this is, uh, you've got audio with me. Let me just have a quick look, just to say yes please. Yes, you have got audio, that would be great. Um, somebody just say yes, I've got audio, that would be super. And then we'll get going because there's lots of people. Yeah, um, <laughs> red cars in, lovely. Um, audio okay, please somebody a thumbs up just to say that we've got audio and then I'm good. So yeah, fabulous. Right, okay. Uh, there's a bit of a lag on that. So I think it's about 10 second lag before uh, you get what I'm actually saying. So welcome anyway um, to this first of many sessions, I'm sure through 2019. I just want to find, I wanted to find a way of sharing some of my 14, 15 years worth of uh, content to lots of people. Um, and, you know, I'm confident that in the 30 minutes that we spend on the line today, there will be something, just a nugget of something that will be of value to you. And I, I just thought, let's sort of break this in easy and gently and, and work with some things that are sort of soft skill based and uh, certainly some things that I think you're going to need through 2019. Self-discipline and accountability are things that every human being struggles with. We're like water, you know, we, we will always, human beings will always try and find the quickest route and the shortest route to something. And consequently, our self-discipline and accountability levels are, are always challenged. And when we don't, when we're business owners and we don't have people watching over us, of course, that's it's tough. So, um, so I thought I've got ten sort of, um, and these aren't tasks; they're principles. They're like th these aren't things that you go and tick. These are sort of core principles that help with self-discipline. Um, with everyone loves an acronym, so we've got a bit of an acronym at the end here uh, that will help whip you into action. So I kind of thought um, a bit of S and M would always get a few people to come and watch. Um, right, so um, emergency exits are here and here. Um, if anybody needs the toilet, then obviously put your hand up. You're free to go to the toilet. Uh, please grab a pen and a piece of paper. If you haven't downloaded them yet, there are two PDFs in one of the units in the group that are just fill in PDFs, you know, just fill them in as you go. Um, it'll help keep you engaged. I guarantee it'll help you become more accountable and help you with your self-discipline rather than just sitting and listening. Of course, you can play this back and print these off later, but I would encourage you to um, uh, print them off and, and grab a pen. Um, and I think probably the best thing to do, because I really want to try and keep these just to 30 minutes maximum, um, you know, some of these will be a lot shorter than that, but certainly I really don't want to be rambling on. We're all busy people and I really want to try and get the message across and, um, and we'll see where we go from there. Right. So um, before we crack in, there were some other things I wanted to share. So um, so that you understand where we're going in 2019 with the NBA. So there are people on here now that I know are watching that are going to be tagged as go-to experts. Um, some of them may not even know that yet, um, but these will be people that I recognize and uh, trust to be people that are uh, that you could go to uh, and that are experts. So, and in their chosen field, whether it's their niche or whatever it might be, and I trust them implicitly. And uh, I think from, from my perspective, to be able to identify some people that I would go to and that I trust, um, I, I, I'm hoping will help you. We're gonna have some what I call dress down days. So I really wanna try and keep uh, advertising and marketing off of the group because you can go and do that all sorts of other places. But it's a part of business, so there will be some days where uh, literally we'll promote it as a dress down day, and it'll just be like get your adverts in, promote your socks off, you know, just share with everybody what it is that you do and what it is that you're selling. So I'll, I'll they'll be marked up as dress down days. I'll, I'll I'll absolutely make you aware of when we're doing them. Uh, so don't be surprised if we're not on a dress down day if we send you home if you put your adverts up because I will just basically take them off. Um, we're going to do some virtual networking around the planet, so I, want, I, I have no idea if it's going to work, um, but we're going to try and get at least sort of 20, 30 people uh, from other countries in on a single um, uh, broadcast all around the screen, 
And um, I know that there are people in this group from Brazil, from Australia, from America, uh, from Ireland, um, uh, even from uh, Fairham. So there are people literally from all over the planet in this group, and I really want to try and uh, create some kind of virtual business network that you know we just can't get anywhere else. And we'll put together some kind of networking that is you know very similar to something you would go and have a breakfast with somebody about, but we're going to do it virtually. Uh, we're going to have some guest speakers. Um, you know, some of my GTEs I'm going to invite to run some sessions because uh, I just know how fab they are. It'll give me a week off and give them an opportunity to um, flex their expertise. Uh, giveaways, competitions, stay in the group this year. I'm going to be giving tickets away for the Big 200. So if you know anybody that is even remotely interested in something like the Big 200 but can't afford the 100 quid, then they might want to drop in here for a bit because I'm going to be giving some tickets away for that this year. And just mountains of business content. So like, I, I can't, I've got a book here that is, I'm not kidding, it's like this. So, right, so let's just talk about some accountability and some discipline then. So let, let's get some of this out of the way and I'm going to move myself down here and hopefully this technology is all going to work. Um, you, can, you can see what I've been spending my Christmas doing. So um, putting all these new toys together. Right, so um, session number one then, um, self-accountability, discipline, self-discipline, and whipping you into action is where we're going. So the first thing uh, that we really need to talk about uh, on this is about pace. So uh, one of the things that, you know, um, uh, Janet, my wife, is a marathon runner, and uh, she'll be the first to tell you that if you go running out of the blocks on the 1st of January, uh, you'll be out of puff by the time you get to March. So um, think of, uh, you know, one of the things that I was trained to do back in 2004 is to put together with business owners five year plans. If I said to you, we're, we, you know, we're, we're stretching out to do a five year plan. We haven't, I, I personally have no idea how to pace that. So, but I, I have a good understanding on how to pace a year. So I binned the whole five year thing. And I, I just think 12 months, um, rotates quick enough for us to smell it, see it, taste it and hear it. Um, we know roughly uh, where we would expect to be by the end of this year. So set out on, on your journey and the things that you're setting to achieve, pace it across a year. So, you know, you should only re really be looking at making four, three to four big changes uh, in a year. So um, I used to have 12, 15 different things up on a wall and it's too many. So, so um, understand, so if you have three or four big changes, set them into quarterly blocks and when do you want to get them done but you know the first part of success in in accountability is is actually appreciating that you need to set yourself out on a good pace get yourself organized so that is office space desk space i was talking i don't know if she's on here actually but i was talking to karen murray yesterday um on a zoom call and, um, uh, you know, she's recently moved house and she won't mind me sharing, you know, she's in a pickle from an office based perspective and she was like going crazy. So and as somebody that, you know, definitely likes to line all her ducks up, um, I can only begin to imagine. So now I know that there are people that are just plain messy. OK, all I can say to you is that if you get yourself structured and organized, your accountability as a principle from as, as if these are guiding principles, I promise you. We all know that feeling. If somebody, you know, if we have a good clear out, how much better it feels. The other thing, as a people watcher, one of the things that I look out for is when I go into business owners' um, offices and things, if they are um, organized and structured, then I know that their minds are too. So so if you're a mess and a, and a pickle, then that doesn't mean that, you know, you're, you're, you're not able to work, but you will definitely be more efficient. And even if you just did it four or five times a year, Get yourself, um, you know, and, and predefine when you're going to get yourself organized, structured, get things up, get things laid out. Um, you know, there, there are people that are incredibly good at it. Um, my little red car's on this call, I know. Um, uh, she's somebody uh, that we did some coaching with last year, and she sat down 
and um, her planning and organizational structure uh, put me to shame. It's very, you know, tabbed everything out in a folder, uh, very, very impressive. So, uh, which means I know that she has a structured mind and then I know that her self-accountability and self-discipline is definitely going to be on point. So this is, de as a principle, I know that if people are structured and well-organized, then they're more likely to uh, be successful with their self-discipline. Patience. So this sort of ties in with the first one a little bit really is, um, you know, uh, if you've taken this long to get yourself into a pickle, uh, I'm not suggesting you're going to take this long to get yourself out of a pickle, but just, you know, um, uh, be sort of patient with expectation. You know, it's not all going to happen at once. Um, which is why I love this whole 12 month thing. So um, there are, I love this time of year. So I've got clients that have moved house this year and, and clients that have had been able to buy houses. That These were goals that they set last year. And so of course they've had to be patient because this time last year they didn't even have the deposit that alone pick a house or the, the thought that they were gonna be able to get a house. So, so uh, being patient with um, what it is that you're doing and, and not beating yourself up will definitely help with keeping you disciplined and on track. Right, so this is an interesting one. So um, remembering what it is that you're out to achieve and what it is that you're um, uh, you know, uh, trying to, say, to stay self-disciplined for. Um, the, uh, the best way that I can sort of describe on, uh, on how to do something like this is to physically have in your conscious space what it is that your objective is. Now, for some people that might be a dream board, for some people it might be a dream book, for some people it might just be a piece of paper. Um, I, we do a thing called magic numbers, not happy numbers, magic numbers. Uh, we did it for, for years and years. Um, and I can remember one client that every single month she would frame her magic numbers. So essentially uh, magic numbers, uh, what will happen is that during the course of these uh, MBAs, these sessions, we're going to share lots of numbers that you can track. So, and um, it, you know, it, 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 it's a, a mash of lots and lots of numbers. And your magic numbers are core numbers that every single month it might only be four or five core numbers. It might only be one number, but they you draw out from all of the noise of all your numbers. You'll have four or five core numbers that you're going to put into your conscious space around you, up on the office wall, on your screensaver. Um, I had somebody that put it in the um, uh, sun visor in their car. So it was their year goal. So every time they put their sun visor down, it was in front of them. So um, th th this is um, uh, psychology, okay? So put in what it is that you want to achieve into your conscious space will subconsciously remind you of what it is uh, that you're trying to achieve. So. Um, in many respects, you know, I don't, I guess it's fairly topical uh, to talk about weight loss at this time of the year. But, you know, this whole thing about having fridge magnets about big knickers, you know, uh, fridge fridge pickers wear big knickers, I think, is, is that we don't have it on ours, but you can, I'm pretty sure that that's the fridge magnet. That's to remind you every time you open the fridge that, you know, anything you're about to take out of here is going to increase your pant size. So, you know, so these kind of goals put them your year goals put them into your conscious space it will definitely help with your self-discipline i promise you right so i would encourage you to write down what your weaknesses are what is it where are what historically has stopped you before you got to the end of january what has stopped you from achieving um uh, your goal for the year because you know over 90 percent of us you know they're all binned by the time we get to the end of the uh, the end of the month what historically has stopped you? So um, uh, write them down and identify them and recognize them so that you can basically shoot them or move them out of the way uh, and, and, and take them out of your um, environment before they become an issue or a challenge to you. So uh, absolutely encourage you to um, write them down or ask friends or relatives, um, um, you know, be brave enough to say to them, where do you, you know, why do you think I've not been able to do some of the things that I know I want or need to do? So uh, but really important. So again, bringing these things into the into the conscious space, this is this whole um, um, uh, angel and devil talking in your ears. So, you know, I talk about the we of me. People that have heard me talk about the we of me, I'm sure. Um, we are all two people when I'm sat coaching clients. 
um, uh, most of the time the person I'm, I'm sat with is on point you know they're, they're the ones that are happy and and um, uh, that they've turned up and they're the ones that want to make the changes and everything else it's their other you that me and that person need to get at so and so things like this um, understanding where your weaknesses are because they're the strengths of your subconscious mind to stop you and telling lies to you and stop you from doing the things that you want to do so top tip write down and uh, know and understand what your weaknesses are if you're scratching your head a little bit go and ask somebody that you know and trust and say look why do you think i've not been able to achieve this so um there's a fabulous um i, I, I run it at all my events there's a fabulous formula for change and um uh, i haven't got it as a slide but um uh, I'll tell you what I do. So the, it's, it's the formula for change. I'll drop it in as a PDF into the unit. So um, uh, the, the formula for change uh, with a, a, a brief explanation underneath. So uh, because it's another really good one to print off. But basically it's uh, dis dissatisfaction times the vision plus the first steps have got to be greater than the resistance. All makes no sense to you right now, but I'll put some explanatory notes underneath. I'm just conscious of the time. So Right, so um, removing temptation. So similar to know what your weaknesses are, once you understand and know what your weaknesses are, you want to try and remove them from your daily routine. So um, something as simple as, you know, if you commit to an hour, two hours a day, a week, or whatever it might be, to personal development in 2019, um, uh, then uh, things like um, your email pop-ups, uh, messenger your phone you know what one of the things that uh, one of the top tips actually I gave to uh, a good uh, our good friend mr. Brad Burton um, I said to him because you know his, his phone is basically glued to his hand um, is to put your phone into literally it's two swipe it's one swipe on a button press put your phone into aircraft mode when you you just want to get on and do some stuff so literally swipe down into aircraft mode and it basically just turns it all off so you won't get anything coming through crack on with what you're doing and then turn it back on again so you know it's just little things like that nothing complicated uh, it's all really quite simple stuff to um, to understand but it's just things that we don't do right so um, be honest with yourself so there will be things that um, you know I, these, this was one of the big changes for me was understanding you know things like uh, things that I'm good at things that I'm not good at and not feeling uncomfortable about not wanting to do things that I'm rubbish at and um, paying somebody else to do something that I don't want to do um, and recognizing the things that I know I need to do because those things are constraints and then there are some things that I absolutely have to do nobody else can do them for me lose weight get fit change my diet, you know, I can't get anybody else to do those for me. Um, so uh, I, being completely honest with myself and um, having a, a really good conversation with myself about some of the things that um, I knew that I needed to change. So this is, you know, going back 2004. Um, I used to sulk, um, you know, I used to be a, a, a half empty kind of guy, very stressed. Um, you know, I, I wrote all these things down and I literally just uh, month by month started to chip away um, about the things that I didn't like about myself to um, to get them fixed. You know, that that, that I absolutely thought, well, you know, th th this is how I identify with myself now. I need to you know get these things gone. So, again, um, this one slide on its own is an exercise in its own right. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to see them as exercises. I really want to see them as traits. You know, being honest with yourself is a good trait to have if you're looking to maintain high levels of self-discipline. Um, not so good at this one. Uh, not when I'm just coming up to 60. Um, uh, I'm not nowhere near as flexible as I used to be, uh, certainly first thing in the morning um, when it's as cold as it has been. Um, but I think we all understand. So, um from a goal setting perspective, uh, flexibility, uh, I actually get quite a few clients challenge me on it sometimes. They say to me, um, isn't that cheating when we move a goal or change a goal? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I think she might be on this call now, uh, but there's um, one of my clients 
Uh, we moved, we changed her original goal from last year about September time because it was obvious that it wasn't going to happen due to circumstances that had happened throughout the year. And we reset the goal. I think it was August, September time. And then she hit that goal by about 125 quid. You know, it was like really, really tight, but she hit it. So, um, and it's chuffed a bit. So, you know, so um, one of the ways that you'll be able to achieve flexibility in what you're doing to achieve purpose will be making sure that you're tracking as you go. Because you can't flex, change or alter what you're doing if you're not tracking what you're doing to understand you know, do I need to change anything? So, so I had an email this morning, which I'm going to um, uh, change, you know, I'm going to blur out who it's from, but I'm going to share it into the group because it's to the level that anybody that's in business needs to get at from the, the quality of information that he's sharing back to his team. It was about their targets for December. They didn't hit their target for December. It was a massive target. I think it was 370,000. Um, they didn't hit it. They were a long way under it, um, and um, uh, but the the amount of information that was included in there, and then about what they need to do and what they need to change through January in order to make sure that they uh, recover that loss, you know, the 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 have not hit the target. So, but they can't make those changes and they can't be flexible like that if they're not tracking. So, so. This one you can't do if you're not doing your numbers. So um, there'll be some things that you can do that, you know, w that you can flex or be flexible about. But a lot of the things that you need to know in order to be flexible will be coming in, in uh, future sessions. Right. And I think this is the 10th one before we get the old whips out. So um, take personal responsibility. So um, sim simple to say, um, but every single time you hear words falling out that is blaming somebody else or something else, making excuses or denial that it's a problem of any description at all. You've got to stop yourself, okay? Um, th this again, going back to this, uh, being honest with myself, um, once I started to take full, 100% full responsibility for everything in my life, like everything, it all changed. So, uh, from a self-discipline perspective and from an accountability perspective, accepting full responsibility for everything. Even the things that are out of my control, there are things that I can do that I do have control over that I can be responsible for. So, And just the word responsibility is made up of the, uh, responsible. So it's responsible. I'm able to make a response. So again, sometimes there are things that we can't, take responsibility for if we don't know the numbers so we're definitely in fact next week we're going to be starting you know the journey on to um, uh, pulling some numbers out of your business so right so uh, that's the last one take full responsibility I'm just conscious of the time we got six more minutes I really want to try and keep these to 30 minutes oh there was one more so bonus uh, reward yourself so um, <clears throat> here's the trick so uh, coach's tip uh, grab a piece of paper or flip one of those PDFs over and write down 12 ways in which you would reward yourself in 2019. Um, I don't know, charm on a bracelet, new pen, a spa day, box of chocolates, weekend away, cinema, a donut. It really just 12 things that you would reward yourself for. Um, that's one a month. And then right alongside those 12 things that you would reward yourself. 12 things that you will do in order to receive that reward. So look, now you're a business owner, nobody's watching over you. Nobody's going to rub your shoulders and say you're doing fab or you're doing fine. You got to reward yourself. So so find and and, and human beings, we're no different to any other human being. You know, we get off on being acknowledged and being rewarded and um you know uh, being recognized, it's, it's classic um, Maslow. So, you know, we de we definitely benefit from uh, as receiving reward. So we're, we're, as business owners, the only way we're gonna do that is if we do it for ourselves. So, so f piece of paper, 12 things that you would reward yourself uh, with, um, and then write, so it's we're basically um, deconstructing the process. So we're, 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 we run it the other way. So And then list 12 ways in which you would uh, do something that would um, uh, be worthy of the reward that you've written. So, um, and, um, and I'll pay for all of those. So just send me what they are and um, I'll get onto Amazon and I'll send them all to you. 
Right. Um, right. So there, there, there they are. Um, again, these will be, uh, I'll post, the, I didn't post it up before because I didn't want to tell you what they were, but I will post this list. Uh, no, I won't. I'm not going to post this list because there are going to be people watching this after, uh, after we've been live. Um, right. So uh, five core ingredients, okay, for self-discipline. Uh, this is the whole whip thing. So it's just a bit of fun, really. So an acceptance that you know that you are in need of making change and that you need to be more disciplined. That's the internal conversation, okay? That, that's where we start. Willpower. So here's the thing. Willpower is in a bucket, and that bucket is finite, and that bucket is leaky, okay? So when you get up at, at whatever time it is in the morning, that willpower bucket is full. This is science, okay, so um, it's just Ian science. That bucket is full and of willpower. And as you start drawing from that bucket, it will start to reduce. So as you get further into your day, your ability to have willpower will be less and less. Even if you're not using or doing something that requires willpower, because it's a leaky bucket, it will go down. So anything that is willpower dependent, um, new habits, uh, being more disciplined, you know, all of those kind of things, you're better to try and get at those earlier in the day, okay? So there's a really good tip for you. So um, willpower. Right, so no shortcuts to great places. So this isn't easy. This is not meant to be easy. And in fact, you're not trying to achieve easy. If you want to try and achieve easy, go sit on the couch. That's easy, okay? Ticks the box, I've achieved easy. This isn't meant to be easy. It's meant to be bloody hard work. It's meant to be tough. So acknowledge, embrace, and enjoy the, what I call desirable pain. You know, is, it is meant to be tough. So uh, nobody ever got any sense of achievement out of something simple. So uh, I've never met anybody that curled up on the couch, watched an episode of EastEnders, and felt a sense of achievement. I, seriously, I've never met them. So... Uh, be industrious. So, uh, but so the thing about industrious and the thing about hard work is, if you're struggling to do the work, and if you're not being industrious, the internal conversations you've got to have is, what am I actually doing here? You know, why aren't I enjoying what I'm doing? So, if you're not loving what you're doing, then these two are going to be really, really tough. So, you've got to find a way to enjoy what you're doing. You know, one of the things that I coach into businesses on a weekly basis is is making sure that the my clients are enjoying the process, not the end product. Because the end product is, is you running over the finish line with that sense of euphoria, go, passes really quickly. So you've really got to enjoy the process. And then it repeats, you know, then you've got to go again. So these two, being industrious and working hard, are only easier to do if you're loving what you're doing. Stick at it. So, you know, right, so the persistence thing, I, I, it's an interesting one. So just last year, one of the things I've started to talk about now is that that very cliched image of somebody down a very, very deep hole with a pickaxe, you know, and stopping so close to the diamonds. I, I just think isn't relevant in the world we live in today. I, I just think that if you're not enjoying what you're doing, and if it's something that is genuinely beating you up, climb out of the hole and dig a new one. Climb out of the hole and dig a new one. Climb out of the hole and dig a new one. Try lots of different things. If you are genuinely not happy what you're doing, go find something else to do. And then that's where the persistence element kicks in. So if you're loving what you're doing, if you are happy and you get up and enjoy you know, the process, the hard work and the, and the industrial element of what you're doing, the persistence is easy. So is, is no problem at all. So there's your whip. Um, um, a whip, uh, acceptance, willpower, hard work in being industrious and persistence. Um, hopefully you found that useful too. Um, session one done on 30 minutes. Uh, thank you very much. I'm a Virgo. I hate being late for anything. Right, next week. So I'm going to mix up the days. I'm going to mix up the times. I'm going to keep a track. I'm a coach. I'm going to keep a track of, um, you know, uh, when we get the, the, the best. To, in fact, I'll probably um, put it out as a poll. Next week, we're going to do Thursday in the evening. Um, we're going to do some Saturdays. We're going to do some midweekers. We're going to do some early mornings. We're going to do lots of different um, uh, different times of the day for these. So 
um, let's see where we go and of course it gives people an opportunity to come on live that ordinarily can't if it's on the same time every week so next week we're going to score your business um, the numbers that count uh, do you see what I did there um, it is a, um, a benchmark okay for everybody that's in business that is that is uh, a part of the group in here uh, we're gonna uh, give you two forms to fill in I'm gonna talk you through how they work um, it, I'm guessing it might not take 30 minutes next week but this is foundation and is the first tick in the box of you putting together a stonking dashboard for 2019 so you know we're gonna literally build it step by step so and this is the first step towards that um, I hope you've enjoyed it um, I've you know two years ago I uh, put together MBA and it, it just, I just haven't been able to get at it. And, um, you know, with 14 years of content, it's so much. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you how much we've got to share. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you found uh, today's, you know, sort of uh, entry level stuff, really, uh, just to help with some accountability. Uh, hopefully there's some top tips in there. Um, uh, I just check in to make sure I haven't missed anything on some of the things I wrote down. I, I know as soon as I come off, I'm going to remember stuff. Um, we're 32 minutes in. I'm going to uh, end the stream. So uh, thank you so much for joining in today. Um, we want to get this up to a thousand plus people by Easter. Please invite your socks off. It's open. It's free. Get some people in here. It works better with friends, as they say. Um, let's get some more people into the group. And, um, uh, you know, I think... Um, uh, Sarah Higgs did a, f a fabulous job today with uh, 20, 30 people come in um, uh, from invites from her. So thank you so much for joining in. I hope you found it useful. I should be going through the notes uh, after I come off the call and we will respond accordingly. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you next week. Bye for now.